There's often a lot of debate and questioning over what time period constitutes adolescence. Some people say it's um, when puberty starts. Other people say it's when it's 13. Other people say uh, when you start high school. There's a lot of kind of debate on that the exact time. And the reality is it's hard to say um, because it, it's hard to say um, particularly when um, like a lot of girls will start menstruation uh, at between like eight and nine. Is that old enough to be considered an adolescent? Even though they have that onrush of hormones, they don't have the cognitive development that a typical adolescent would have. Generally, though, puberty refers to the years of rapid physical growth and sexual maturation that in childhood. So this starts to produce a person who is of adult size, shape, and sexuality. The sequence for puberty to start is listed here. Um, your hypothalamus sends a signal to the pituitary glands, which sends um, hormones down to the adrenal glands which enlarges the gonads, which produces a rush of sex hormones. The entire body and brain are transformed by puberty. You'll notice a few differences between this sequence of observable, observable changes between girls and boys. Um, the girls typically start with nipple growth and a few pubic hairs, whereas boys start with growth of the testes and then maybe some initial pubic hair growth. Um, the brain growth we've already talked about, the final thing to grow is the prefrontal cortex, which isn't fully developed until uh, late 20s. We do see a lot of disorders starting in adolescence that weren't necessarily there um, in childhood. Particularly we see for boys, uh, more instances of schizophrenia, girls with se severe depression. Not to say that depression isn't prevalent in early childhood and middle childhood. It's just more prominent and there's certainly a growth um, of people that we see it in during adolescence. We've talked a bit about uh, brain development as we've gone along, particularly the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex is limited right now in its connections and generally it um, is what helps us uh, plan ahead, make better decisions, uh, understand kind of long-term consequences. And this is where a lot of risky behavior will come into play in adolescence because this part of the brain just isn't equipped to deal with some of these decisions that we have in adolescence. Gray matter is reduced as white matter increases during adolescence, in part because pruning during the teen years, which is the last two images you see in this picture, allows intellectual connections to build. Sleep deprivation and irregular sleep schedules increase the risk of insomnia, nightmares, mood disorders, uh, which could include depression, conduct disorder, anxiety, uh, and also falling asleep while driving. Um, interestingly, during adolescence, a lot of kids have a hard time going to sleep at their you know, normal bedtime. So in childhood, if you say bedtime is at eight or nine, okay, no problem. By adolescence, it's usually 11 or 12, maybe later, and there's often a lot of um, butting heads between parents and children over bedtime, but the melatonin, which kicks in naturally in our body to say it's time to go to sleep, kicks in about two hours later in adolescence than it does at any other time. I think this is just part of the hormone disruption that we're seeing generally in adolescence. A lot of things are going on 
And then also um, blue lights from technology is really affecting sleep at this time. It's having a strong effect on our circadian system. So I think a lot of people now, particularly people who work on computers a lot or read a lot on maybe a tablet or do a lot of gaming, um, are starting to invest in these blue lights that you can buy, uh, like blue light glasses that you can buy. I think you can just buy it on Amazon. Um, but they, they kind of help cut down on that glare and help cut down on some of the uh, negative effects that it has on your circadian system. Three of every four high school seniors are sleep deprived. Even if they go to sleep at midnight, which many do, they get up uh, typically before 8 a.m. because they've got to get to school on time. So then all day they're tired. This is cumulative negative effects on their sleep uh, because of the time that we have school set. There's also been a lot of question about can we move school to a later time. There's a lot of pushback because as it is now, they're kind of in line with elementary school and things, even though we know biologically their melatonin is in later, so they're going to sleep later and they're getting less sleep. We, we just generally haven't been sensitive to that um, as far as making legislative change to let school start later, um, which, which actually um, they think would help with grades and help with attitudes, would help with maybe uh, risky decision making. There's a lot of benefits that, that can be had with kids getting more sleep, but unfortunately we're just not seeing that very often in practice. I think um, most of adolescence is characterized by um, this heightened arousal, these, um, and that's particularly with um, risk taking something novel. Oh gosh, I've never done that before. Um, there's like a mystery about it. There's an excitement about it, particularly if your friends are going to do it because um, peer relevance is never more important as it is in adolescence. You need to kind of uh, be on the same level with them. And we'll certainly talk about that more in the next chapter when we look at um, the social world for adolescents.